Hey guys, I wanted to take every, a moment to bring everybody up to speed on the um, theft situation. First off, I want to just immensely thank everyone in the community that reached out to us. Um, we had identified the individual within probably about two hours. We, um, uh, we had over 10 separate com um, tips or, you know, we had 10 separate people that identified the individual by name. Um, fortunately, he was identifiable via the video. Uh, people in the community knew who he was. He was kind of a known thief. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the story that, that, get down, bud, that happened with this real quick. Um, and then if you want to watch the video afterwards, you can. But basically, my intent was to uh, hammer this guy. And because I just can't stand a thief. Um, and to me, it's not so much stealing from me, but because I'm a business owner, it's stealing from my employees and their family too, who I'm, I'm extremely protective of. And um, in the course of finding out who this individual was and working with the sheriff's office and all this stuff, the charge he was looking at was a felony. Come to find out, the individual was already uh, a twice convicted felon, which means when he gets convicted with this, which he obviously would, we, we have it on video, um, he's going away for the rest of his life. So, um, social media uh, applied a lot of pressure, and he actually contacted me himself, um, admitted to what he did, apologized for it, want to see there was something working it out, and you know, I'm one of those people that believes uh, people deserve second, third, and sometimes thirty-second chances. Okay, um, going away to prison for the rest of your life is a big thing. Um, and, you know, uh, I've been a cop for a long time. I've put a lot of people in prison. Um, but but it's still, it still weighs on, on my heart, right? So um, then his pastor reached out to us, asked if there was anything we can do. So I spoke with this pastor and came up with a plan. And the video that follows this is what we did. But long story short version, uh, he's going to atone for what he did. Uh, he's gonna, he is a, a, a um, drug addict. He is going to go into a six-month treatment. Uh, the statute of limitations on his felony is four to six years. i got to look it up a little deeper, but it's, it's at least four. Um, so I essentially own him for the next four years. And long story short, I told him that he will adhere to every single condition of his rehabilitation, his meetings, everything. If he's so much as five minutes late to a single meeting, I don't care if, if aliens crash into his car he better figure out a way to get there on time or i'm immediately invoking it and the reason i even decided to do this um is and it, look this may all end up being bs and he may have you know hoodwinked me but um he's an older gentleman he's 62 or uh, 56 years old and you know he mentioned about his grandkids and all this and that and um i i told him as you'll hear in the video if you watch it I don't really care about him. He's a grown man. He's had every opportunity to 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 fix himself. But what I do care about are his grandkids. And if I could play a role in not having that grandfather be an utter piece of crap to them for the rest of their life, if this is the chance, then I want to I want to go. You know, I want to sleep knowing I gave him that. And the way I looked at it is, at the end of the day, it's 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 it's. It's no threat to me because I doubt he's going to stay good for four or six years and then suddenly mess up. If he's going to mess up, he's going to mess up. And if he messes up, he gets what he would have got anyway. But if he doesn't, then this becomes a success story of, of um, you know, redemption for him. So what you're going to see is a video of him coming. He requested to talk to me. He came into my office and, um, you know, we, um, we talked. And it's a very frank conversation. I mentioned it to him, and I want to mention it here. The purpose of the video is in no way, shape, or form meant to shame him. Just as I explained to him, the intent was to serve as evidence, which I have two separate phone-recorded, unsolicited um, confessions from him. We have a confession on video. So, so he's done. But it was to serve as evidence, and it was to provide him a tool to hold himself accountable. Because if this doesn't hold him accountable, then unfortunately... He's a lost cause, um, and you know that that will be the you know that will be the nail that 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 seals his coffin. So, um, what you're about to watch is that that exchange um, in its entirety. I may cut out a couple of things if there's identifying information, but um, 
but that's it. And, and, and again, I just want to be clear. My intent is not to shame him. I mean, he should be shamed. He should be. He is shameful of what he did. But that's not my intent in posting the video. It's it's to serve as the evidence. It's to give him a tool of accountability. It's also to show that he did, at the smallest level, own up to what he did and is and, and is at least trying to make it right. Um, he will work off the restitution for the things he stole. He stole about probably fifteen hundred dollars plus worth of steel and traded it to a guy for twenty bucks. So to get drugs. So um, we want this to serve as a legacy of what he did. So that he knows, like, he can't pretend. It's there. It's there forever. So um, hopefully he'll be able to look at this as a tool in the future when he starts feeling weak. Um, but we've worked with his church, and we're going to hopefully get him in a resident program here before the, end of the, before the end of the year. So there you go. Again, thank you to everyone. As a community, we can stop this kind of stuff. Um, just thank you. Thank you. And if there's ever anything I can do for any of you, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Y'all stay safe. All right, so let me explain to you how this is going to go. Um, your pastor did call and talk to me. Um, My pastor? Yeah. Uh, actually, right after I got off the phone with you yesterday and set the appointment, he called and, and talked. So, a um, couple of things. One, everything in here is obviously being recorded. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. And I'll explain those to you here in a bit. But what um, I'm going to essentially ask you some questions. And... I want you to answer them, and then I'm gonna explain to you kind of what the deal is, and you got some, you know, some choices to make, so to speak. Um, so first off, what's your name? My name is Boyd J. Broad. Okay. What's your What's your date of birth? Okay. And nobody's forcing you to be here, right? You called me and asked me to come here and and asked me to have a meeting with you, correct? That's correct. Sir. All right. So reiterate to me why you're here. Because of uh death of some steel back here on the right hand corner okay and that occurred over two separate occasions right it did okay um so how how did you know that that was back there really by coincidence but i mean like coincidence how like it uh like how'd you even see it to know it was back there like, were you just hanging out back here for some reason, or? No, I just passed through the lot. Okay, well, what passed were you? Passed through the lot. And, why know. would, why, so why were you coming through the lot, though? Like, there's no purpose to come through that lot. Right. I mean, what, were you just riding around looking for shit? Yeah. Pretty much? Okay. Um, so when you came the first time, why did you only take the railroad ties, and why, why didn't you take everything? Uh. No. Okay. Really don't know. All right. Um, know. Do you recall when you came the last time and took it, covering up your license plate with a T-shirt or something? Yes. Okay. So I mean, you you, you knew what you was I doing. I knew what I was doing. Okay. Right. Yeah, I knew it was. Uh, it would have been bad. All right. So why were you doing that? Uh, cocaine addiction. Uh, uh, cocaine or crack or heroin? Like what? What exactly are you addicted to? Crack. Okay. You had a prior arrest for crack, right? Yes. Okay. And you said um, you already have two felonies, correct? Yes. Okay. So you understand you get another felony, which what you stole would be would constitute a felony because it's over $1,000. Um, that's three strikes. Right. You're, you're going away for the rest of your life. Right. Um, knowing that, why would you risk that? Uh, I guess the sickness of the uh, intense feeling of the crack cocaine. Do you know, did you, when you stole that, did you know that this was a gun store in a shooting range? I did. It's fucking ballsy, dude. I know, man. Um. I know. I'm sorry. No, I know, and, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to chew your ass, per se. Right. I just want to, I want to feel comfortable. Right. That I know you understand the gravity of what's going on. Oh, I do. Um. I do. You are on video. I've got two separate unsolicited recorded confessions from you now three um i had no less than 10 people contact me and give me your name like they knew who you right. were and you are a known thief like that's what your community thinks of you is that they just know yeah that's Lloyd broad he's a thief um 
you know, uh, that some of those people said you've stole stuff from them. Um, you know, and of course everyone wants to, uh, you know, wants me to, you know, do everything I can to put you away. And I want, I want to make sure you understand that, like, you are 100% fucked. Like, there is no way out of this that right. does not, if, if, if we go that route, you are caught dead. There's no if, ands, or buts. That this is a slam dunk for the DA. He's gonna high five and take me to lunch. Like it's, right. it's, 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 it's not even a, a contest. So, I'm the type of person. I, I've been a police officer for 23 years. Right. I'm a United States Marine. I'm someone who is very big on integrity and honesty and, and that type of stuff. Of right. course, I don't steal from people. Um, and and here's the thing, a couple things I need you to understand from my perspective. Number one. Yeah, it sucks, you know, the, the loss of the value of the steel, particularly right now because my business could, could use the money. Um, but it's not even that, you know. Um, I have employees that work here, and I'm responsible to them. Right. So if something injures my business, it's not just injuring me, it's potentially injuring them. And then, you know, at a time where we're in the holiday season and people are trying to you know, do stuff for their fam with their family, and so it's just... You know, it just kind of adds an additional layer of insult to injury. Right. Um, you know, your pastor called and explained to me that, you know, you're playing, and you, you said as well, um, have you, when you talked to me the other day, you said you've been clean for five days. Are yes. you still clean? Yes. Okay. So how'd you all of a sudden just manage to stay clean for five days? Very hard. Very hard. Staying <laughs> busy in my house, calling my sponsor once or twice a day. Who's your sponsor? Uh, Wayne Truitt. Okay. Uh, Where do you go to meetings at? Uh, right here at Celebration Church. Okay. How long have you been interacting with Celebration Church? Nine years. Okay. Nine years. Nine Who, uh, years what are you, so are you going into a, a resident program? I'm trying to get into a full long-term Bethel program through, uh, through our church. Okay. Uh, so is that an inpatient or an outpatient? In other words, do you stay there or do you just go there uh, every day? I'm unsure yet. Okay. I'm not sure if they're going to have a full-time bed right now or, or I'm going to be in an outpatient program right now. Who makes that call? Is it the church? Uh, it's a, it depends upon a, uh, if a bed a bed. Right, but, but I'm asking this, like, who's in charge of it? Is it the church in charge of the program? No, I think... Uh, or the church just puts people in it? Okay. Yeah, just... The pastor was there. You okay. Know, he's a, uh, well, I'll I'll reach out to him because, as far as I'm concerned, I'm I don't I don't know you well enough to trust you with an outpatient program. Right. So to me, the only way this makes sense is for you to be in an inpatient program. So, um, I'll see. I mean, I I don't have any connections, but I'll call him and say, look, if this dude doesn't get an inpatient program, he's going to prison. Like that's that's oh, really he's going to get me in, in. Okay. In, but it can't be after the first of the year. Why? Because you said it can't be until after the first yes, year. Sir. Okay. So, what is your plan to stay clean and out of trouble till oh, after the man, first year? Going to church and going to meetings four or five days a week. Why that? Why didn't that work before you stole from me twice? Because uh, I let the devil infiltrate. Well, what's going to stop him from infiltrating I'm a Christian, again? I'm a believer in Christ. Okay, I okay. believe there's a heaven and hell. Okay, I believe there's right and wrong, and what I did was completely wrong. I understand that, sir. Okay. And I, uh, and I believe you and do. And I'm asking for forgiveness, okay? Not because of the charges, because uh, uh, we should forgive like Jesus forgives everybody else. Anyway, that don't mean I didn't do wrong. And no, I should I, I, we understand the that. On we, it, we're on the see? same page you did wrong, but what I'm asking you is. Uh, what are you actually going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again? Okay. How are you going to make sure you don't trip up between now and the time you start the program? What guarantee can you give me other than just saying I will? That's uh, going to make sure I can guarantee you don't do going, something again. By going to church and I call myself. Yeah, but the, you're not at the church 24 hours a day. No, you can't. So how can I guarantee you? How I'm can asking you. I really don't. I so, really so you don't. have a sponsor. I have a sponsor. You have the church. I have a church. Who, who I have a the? Pastor. I got people okay. I can call twenty. So, who lives seven. with you? My wife, Gail, for thirty-two years now. Just her. My 
was feeling robbed. Because when I passed by your house that night, there was about four cars, five cars parked there. Friday, Saturday night. Oh, uh, probably about the time because, you got home. Uh, probably because my wife had found out the uh, the thing was on social media, you know, and uh, all my friends and family found out, you know, how shameful that was for me and them. But Especially them. you've been arrested quite a few times. You're 56 years old. Yeah. You're not. It's, this isn't like a oh hey man, I no. fucked up. You have a pattern of but behavior every, over a lifetime. But listen, every time I would I would stray, okay, I'd make money and uh, and just uh, have that certain urge about that old. Are you working right now? No, I'm retired. Well, how'd you get that truck? My wife bought it for me. What does your wife do? We work at Domino's. She works at, she Domino's. Works at Domino's. I have a pension coming in. I have Social okay. Security coming in. I'm disabled. Okay. So, uh, are you trying to find a job? Am I trying to find a yeah. job? Yeah. Or, or, I mean. Well, I'm, I'm part time commercial crabber. Okay. Too. All right. And, uh, right now. But, uh, but do you have all your licenses and stuff? Because you've also been arrested yeah. for crabbing without a license and other stuff like that. So, are you? Are you? Can you even crab right now, legitimately? Wait, I didn't. I got arrested. tickets. You, know, you got in trouble for crime. I got tickets. Like and I was, tickets. You know, I had tickets for uh, well, a few. Crabbing but what I'm asking you is, is, I get that you're a crabber, but is this even the season to be crabbing? No, it's not. Right. It's so, like so one day a week. Okay. So what I'm asking you is, what can you do between now and let's just say the first of the year, best case scenario, to not just be sitting at home. Like, if you weren't here thing, right now, where would you be? The only thing I can do is, uh, you know, uh, I have a, another part-time job. is driving a lift vehicle, the truck for the man to pay the note on the truck. Yeah. Uh, I've been driving for lift, but, uh, and uh, that hadn't been, that's been slow, you know, and, uh, you know, a couple of people tip me sometimes, and, Money, man. I just can't handle money. Does anyone money. else in the household do drugs? No, sir. Never have. All right. And I didn't say this, but let me make something clear to you, okay? Like I said, I've been a cop for a minute. Right. I know everything about you. Right. I know shit about you you probably don't even know. Probably so. So, my thing is, from the time you walked in here to whenever this is all taken care of, if at any moment... You lie to me about anything. I don't care how insignificant it is. That's it. It's done. Um, and, and, and it's an all or nothing thing. Um, obviously, the sheriff's office already has this. It, it's, already, it's already at the bureau. Like, It all boils down to whether or not I say, hey, I want to with, withdraw a complaint or not. Keep in mind that that particular felony has at least a four-year, I think maybe a six. I got to look it up. But at least a four-year statute limitation. So... And I'm not saying this to be like a, an ass or anything, but I want to be very clear and specific. I literally own your life for four years. Because at any time in four years, I can make a phone call and, and it's just like it happened yesterday. Right. So, so this isn't a like you just go and you make it through your, your, your rehab program or whatever and then you go back to doing shit. If, if, if this is the, the choice you make to try to you know better yourself, I will absolutely hold you 100 fucking percent accountable. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're a grown man. You could probably be right. my father, but I will treat you like a child. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. Okay. So, so, so this is the deal. Um, obviously, we're going to work on getting you, you know, into that program. I think, and and my guy Sam actually worked at re rehabilitation centers as well, but. Um, we're the past to see what we can do to, as soon as possible get you in something inpatient because I mean crack but didn't you say heroin as well I mean you, you got some shit going on it ain't like you're just gonna not do it for a week and be okay right. so so there's some medical shit that needs to be addressed as well um, like I told you this is a felony um, it, it, there's just no other way around it I mean if, if it goes through you, you're, you're done um, you have to you have to attend it you have to complete it you have to comply with whatever their program is, okay? If they want you doing 50 push-ups a day, you do 51. If, you know, I don't, I don't care what their deal is, but whatever the deal of that program is, you have to be 100% compliant. There's no, second, there's no second chances within this probably 18th chance, I think, you've, you've been arrested. So, so this is 
this is it. This is the, this is the last one. Okay, I, I, I hold that decision. Um, you have to complete it and comply with whatever their requirements are. Then obviously when you get out, you need to get into to NA or AA, you know, the, for that. Um, and then this is what you also, your pastor and I spoke about, um, you have to get those meetings. If you are so much, and, and I'm, be, dude, I'm not trying to, I'm being literally specific with you. If you are even as much as five minutes fucking late to a meeting, that's it. There's, there's no, uh, 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 it's done. That's it. Um, you, uh, once you get out and you're going to meetings in the beginning, um, I'll probably have you call me or, or, or contact me every two weeks just to let me know how you're doing. And then I'll be obviously talking to the people in the program and talking to your pastor and all that because, you know, he's going to stay involved. Um, if you, if you do it, I want you to understand something. This isn't me being vindictive or anything like that. You said something to me on the phone when you called me the other day that, that, that honestly made me just not laugh at you and go kick in your front door myself and snatch you. And that was, you know, you made a comment about your grandkids. And, and right. here's the thing, man. Um, I don't really care about you in this grand scheme of this thing. Right. I care about them. You're a grown man. You've had quite a bit of time to get your shit together. What I'm worried about is you hurting those kids indirectly through your actions. So, um, if you falter when I hammer you, it will not be to get back at you or anything like that. It will be to make sure that you can't hurt those kids by letting them down again. Because you'll be away. I will be protecting them from you. That's that's my intent in it, okay? Um, because it's not really my place to punish you, per se. I have the ability to show you some grace, but it's not my place to punish you. Because believe me, if it was, it would not be going down like this. Um, remember that this was your choice, okay? It was your choice to do what you did. Right. And you called me and asked me for this, so this is this is, this is is the thing. Right. Um, uh, as long as I have that leverage, which is what it is, as long as I have that leverage over you legally, I will absolutely apply it. Um, I would hope that you know if you get four years or six years or whatever ends up being clean, that that would be enough for you to you know have your shit together. Right. Um, but if it's within my, if you if you fuck up, and it is within my power to leverage on you, I will, and that is an absolute promise that. I know you don't know me, but you can ask anybody. It, it is absolutely a fact. Um, and then, um, I'm, I'm not too worried about the monetary side, but that's probably about $1,500 worth of steel you took because it wasn't just regular steel. It was actually AR-500 and part of my range. That is irreplaceable because of the age of that range. Um, so when you get out, we'll figure out the math, but basically, um, you're going to work it off. Okay. So um, I'll figure out the deal and you'll agree to it because you don't really have any other option. But um, but that's what it'll be, and you'll you'll you know, and and hopefully that will also help you stay because it'll give you something to do. Um, but this is what I want from you. Um, I want you to look into this camera, and I want you to make a promise not to me. I want you to make a promise to your grandkids of what you're going to do, because. This is going to get posted along with the, the stuff that I posted about what you did because I want people to know the resolution of it. And it's this is this is not intended to like shame you or anything like that. This serves serves well two purposes really. One, obviously, it's it's evidence. But the main purpose is I want this to be a tool for you to hold yourself accountable. Cuz ain't nobody can it's out there. No it no one oh, can argue what was there. said. But what, but what I'm saying is is if you fuck up this promise that you broke to your grandkids will be what they have to look at for the rest of their life. So don't worry about me and what you did to me. I had that whatever. Right. What you need to do down. when you start feeling like you're going to fuck up is think back to I don't want my grandkids to have to know that I let them down in that video. So you're going to post this on social Absolutely. media? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, do you think that's right? I do. For what I just told you. Right. Because they it's already gonna, know. They already know I'm a thief. Right, Everybody but this knows I got caught. Right, so what this is doing is, like I said, it's serving as a tool for you to hold yourself accountable. But what it's also doing is showing everybody that 
to the extent that you can right now, you own that up I'm to what you did amends. wrong. Yeah, that you I'm own up. To you own up to I'm what you did wrong. I'm holding up to what I what I done to y'all. And that and that's that's what I want. That's part of this process. Is that you calling me in the first place? You coming right. here, and you maintaining uh, it. But, but saying you're sorry and coming all right, here and all is quick. When I talked to my brother-in-law, he said paying restitution. Okay. What, what's the restitution about? The death? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that restitution so means ready to paying back. Settle that now, or you want me no, to go just, through all this I just, process? No, you can go through all this process. Right. I mean, obviously, I mean, you don't I have money if you, process, yeah, believe me. yeah. I'm not I worried mean, about the money. That's not right. my end end goal. Okay, that was my if, wife. Uh, uh, question no, to you. No, 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 no. That she's worried about you the could money come. And she, we can work out a hundred a week to pay you back. No, money to I'm not even worried about the restitution till after you get out of rehab. Okay. Um, because obviously, if you're stealing steel from me, just out of curiosity, how much did you get for it? Man, not not much. It's embarrassing to even. Say. What? What would you what would you brought to pack? You brought it to Paris Road or something? No, I didn't bring it to Paris. You just sold somebody else? Yeah. Fuck, dude. You Shoot. know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. You know what it looked like? It didn't look. It didn't look. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that I didn't yeah. know what it was used for. It looked like yeah. scrap iron to me, man. Yeah. Well, no, I get, I, I you get know? it, and that's the thing, is it? You know. It was rusty. It was old. Yep. Um, anyway, it gave me no right to do what I was doing, and I'm glad I got caught in one way because I wouldn't be getting help. I wouldn't have something to drive for. I wouldn't be uh, embarrassing my, my grandkids or my children anymore. Seeing their father. Have on you the been through media. rehab before? Yes, I've been through a rehab, but I've never been into program. How many times? I tell you, church does me better, better than. Uh, I'm going through this Bethel because I've seen, I've seen a lot of guys. I've seen a lot, of guys, a lot of guys come out of there and they're doing great with their lives. You know, I admit I had a problem. Maybe I got to go reach further than going to meetings. And maybe I got to uh, break my ties on getting cash money. Well, let me ask you this. Who, I mean, obviously you have to get it from somebody. Is it is it the circle of people that you hang out with? That basically, I don't hang out with no one other than church people. I right, mean, but I don't think there's church people selling you heroin. No, no <laughs> man, it's just, no, it's just. You got to change something about the way I you're living your life, man. My, I got to change It my ain't just going activity. to church. It's not like magic. No, because you know, when I get home, when I get home, you ain't at church no more. I ain't at church no more, and not all the time, but my mind goes wandering, you know? And if I don't stay busy, like cleaning the house and doing something around the yard, you know, which I haven't been doing, uh, so I'm how are you, alive. so how are you, you know, six, seven days sober now, off crack and heroin, I mean, are you not man, having withdrawals? Uh, oh, man, am I, I'm sick right now. Okay. I don't know how I made it here. But I had to get up and talk to right. talk to you. I was worrying you if know, you were gonna I'm, make it to be honest right, with you. I'm sick as a dog, dude, but I'll tell you what, it's been five days and it's been hell. Okay? So how are you it's gonna you get worse? With, with addicts, you know. Oh, yeah. So you it's know? gonna get worse before it gets better. Sure so it will. so that's where I'm asking you is is how are you gonna not falter in the next say four or five days? Man, I just gotta keep my faith in Christ. So where does your where does your uh, sponsor live? My sponsor don't live far. My sponsor lives on uh, uh, Plaza Drive, or uh, not Plaza. Uh, but but, but he's he's around Decker there, so he he can he's come in there. Parish, and he'll okay. come at the drop of a hat. That's okay. what I like about the people. You know what was wrong with me? I wouldn't call nobody. Yeah. You know. But I mean, now. Do, but do you honestly, in your brain, understand? What you're looking at? Oh, I'm looking at going you. to prison for the rest of your yeah, you will know, die man. there. I know, and you know, you know, that the rest of that room. there ain't no getting out yeah. later. Like that's it. No, there ain't no getting out. And you know, the DA have every right to throw the whole the whole entire book at me, you know, and put me away. But you know, I think I'm better than that. I think I am. Well, apparently your pastor does too, and. I guess I do too. Or I wouldn't be right. entertaining this, but um, this is this is the shot, man. So oh, so shot, man. don't I don't want you to say their names, but I want you to literally look in that camera, and I want you to make a promise to your grandkids of what you're going to do to get clean. All right. So right now. Yeah, right now. Right, so hey, uh, I'm Roy J. Broad. Uh, I want to make a promise to my grandchildren that. Uh, I don't know what it takes for me to get clean, but I'm going to get clean. I'm going to uh, 
be a, uh, the best grandpa I can be to y'all, and I'll never let y'all down again. Uh, I love y'all so much, and I didn't mean to hurt y'all, but uh, God has given me this one chance, and I'm going to make sure that I do come, everything works out good. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry for what I've done to y'all. I'm sorry for what I've done to this place. And not only that, I'm sorry for what I've, what I've, what I've, what I've become. And uh, I'm going to get better. I just want to make a promise. All right. So where are you heading right now? Home. Okay. Cooking dinner. All right. Well, man, I'm going to be keeping an eye on you, and uh, yeah, I sincerely want you to succeed. I want yeah. this to be a success story of why you don't give up on people. Right. You know, um, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, man. If, if, if I had been sitting here and glanced up at those cameras and saw you, we would, we would probably not be talking. Right. Oh, I know. I mean, this could, and, and, and besides the fact that you'd probably be dead, Either me or one of my guys and our families and this business and probably every I mean, which just there's second and third and fourth order effects to nice. stupid stuff, you know. And then I'm going around to all the businesses telling them, you know, we got somebody. So now everybody, it's just, it's just, it's a ripple effect, you know. Right. So let's let's take that negative ripple and let's start using that same energy to come back positive. I, I want you to succeed, man. I really do. I want to be able to say, you see, that's why I don't fucking give up on people. Because right. believe me, bro. I was sitting in front of your house. Right. I mean, because I can't stand a thief, man, because right. I know how hard I fucking work right. for what I got and for me to be able to provide to, to the people that, that work with me. So um, I had some anger, man. I did. Right. Um, so, you know, I want this to work out. Please don't make me regret this. Right. Um, and be, you know, be, be the good man that you know you can be. Can. Um, you know, we don't always get these kind of chances. So, right. all right, we'll go home, get better. Yeah, and, uh, All right, boy. Be back, man.